Welcome to the world of boxing. Today we will recall one of the most formidable punchers in the entire history of boxing, his career and his rather tough life. His name was Charles Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston, born to be a big brute boxer. We'd have these terrible sparring matches. He was the only man to ever stand up to me. No one has ever stood up to me. Charles Sonny Liston was born on May 8, 1932 in the most deprived district of the city of Little Rock, in one of the poorest state of Arkansas. The family had 25 children from one father and two women, who were unlucky to be his wives in turn. His father, Toby Liston, tried to grow cotton on rented land, though he didn't really know how to do anything in his life except how to make babies, apart from the fact that both wives and children were mercilessly beaten. Most of all, he hated Charlie, who was beaten almost every day. You know why I hate your ass? Because you're a foreign object to life. In the end, he got tired of such a life and he moved to his mother. So he was given a nickname Sonny, which eventually replaced his real name. Sonny Liston spent a lot of time on the street. He often fought and was regularly taken to the police station. One day he was sent to prison for attempting to rob a gas station, and on January 15, 1950, he was sentenced for two robberies of the first degree. From minor things all the way to armed robbery, and uh, he eventually went to prison in Missouri for armed robbery. In prison there was a priest who noticed big and strong Sonny. This man would soon become one of the closest friends of Sonny Liston. Very soon, Liston began knocking out everybody in the prison hall without any problems. Liston got released with a clear conscience at the end of 1952. He settled in the city of St. Louis, Missouri. During the year, he defeated the strongest amateur boxers, and on September 2, 1953, Sonny Liston became a professional boxer. He won the Golden Gloves here, then he went to the national championships where he had three fights, none lasted more than three minutes. So what do you do with him then? You got to turn him pro, there's no point keeping him an amateur. So we did. Sonny Liston won his first six fights, but in the seventh one he lost to Marty Marshall by a split decision. Liston's jaw was broken in several places, but in spite of this, he ended the fight on his feet. Sonny did not break after this defeat and began winning again. Defeating a rival for a rival, he had two bright victories – over famous Cleveland Williams and over Zora Foley. Do you want to fight in the ring in your next engagement? The man got the title. Mr. Floyd Patterson, currently the heavyweight champion. Let us ask you this, Sonny. What, do you, uh, what have you heard are your chances of getting that title fight? I think it's very good from what I hear. Many didn't want this battle to take place, but the last word of Floyd Patterson was decisive in this matter. They didn't want me to fight him either, because there was a good chance of him winning the fight. And I guess uh, uh, if he should win the fight, he would represent the black race. I just felt that here's a man who's had a very similar life to mine, and I felt that he should get a chance, so I overrode my manager and I gave him a shot. Uh, I think he's proved himself as far as being the number one contender is concerned. I personally think that he has every right to fight for the championship, despite his, despite his unfortunate background. 
Casdemato had no choice and the battle took place on September 25, 1962 in Chicago. The entire boxing community, including President Kennedy, demanded that Patterson won, but to everybody's disappointment, it was enough about two minutes for Liston to knock out Patterson and become a new super heavyweight champion of the world. Sonny Liston moves out to face the big chance of his 28 years of a turbulent life. The final blow in the battle was Liston's monstrous left hook. The winner of the New World Heavyweight Boxing Champion, Johnny Liston. Just seemed to sag with the recognition that there was no welcome here for him. champion, one very bright, promising and self-confident character appeared in the world. His name was Cassius Marcellus Clay. It was he who was the main contender for the world crown at the beginning of 1964. Despite journalists and fans loved Ali, his chances were rated by 7 to 1. On February 25, 1964, the arena in Miami gathered a number of sports and showbiz stars as well as 9,000 fans in the stands and millions watching TV. Most of fans predicted Liston's easy victory in the early rounds, but all of them made a mistake. They saw the champion's opponent was a boxer with lightweight speed. The heavyweights don't fight like this said the commentators, and young Clay flitted around the ring without letting Liston even touch himself. Note that the champion Liston all over body, and a right hand, the best punch of the fight so far. Another jarring right hand that time, folks. Another one, Sonny Lobo, Sonny Lobo, Cassius has him hurt. At the end of the fourth round, a strange situation happened to Cassius Clay. Something got in his eyes, and he was almost blind and was on the verge of stopping this fight. 
but his coach calmed the boxer down and tried to wash his eyes, telling him just to run away from Liston in the fifth round. After the battle, many said that the reason for the situation were Liston's gloves, that they were greased with some kind of ointment in his corner. He told Angelo Dundee, his trainer, he said he was blind, he couldn't see. He wanted to quit. Dundee sent him back out there. He said, if you can't fight, run. Angelo just told him, he said, just stay away from him until he'll go away. Still having some problems with his with his eyes. He's blinking and he's bouncing away continually. Having spent the fifth round in defense, Cassius Clay's vision was restored in the sixth, and he confidently continued leading in the fight. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. Between the sixth and the seventh round, Sonny Liston refused to continue the fight. Only Clay clearly understood that he was the heavyweight champion of the world. I feel great, I don't have a mark on my face, yeah. and I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Right. I told the world, I talk to God every day. If God's with me, can't nobody be against me, Sonny. I shook up the world. I shook up the world. Why did you do it, man? Because I'm ignorant. You expect to get a rematch? Well, if Clay want to give me a rematch, I'll take it. And if he don't, imagine I'll forget it. The rematch took place on May 25, 1965 and raised even more questions than the first battle. What was it? The blow of a phantom, as the journalists call it, or skimming the battle by Sonny Liston? The answer to this question remains unknown until day. There was a punch and a hard punch that landed in a vulnerable place. There is footage that shows Liston's neck being snapped back by that punch. The thing that bothered me is Liston could take a hell of a punch. I'd seen him fight guys that were devastating punches. I seen him fight those guys. I've seen those guys knock the daylights out of him for a while, but then he would always come on to knock them out. Of, uh, the fight last night. I think it was a fake fight. Very fake. What did you think of? I thought it was a phony. After the second defeat from Ali, Liston began living his life again, apart from life of the world champion. He never fought for the champion's title again. Sonny continued fighting in the ring, though at a lower level. Without major problems, he dealt with middle-class boxers, until in December 1969 he met with Leotis Martin, who was not afraid of Liston's terrible gaze and managed to knock out the former world champion. His last fight Liston had on June 29, 1970 with the famous boxer Chuck Webner and defeated him. For this fight Liston earned $13,000, but he didn't get a cent of this money. A few weeks before the fight, Sonny asked his friend Lamb Banker to bet on his behalf $10,000 on Mac Foster, who wasn't a bad heavyweight and who was supposed to beat the white heavyweight Jerry Quarry. However, in the sixth round, Quarry knocked out Foster. Sonny asked Banker for a short delay, and when he received money after defeating Webner, the first thing he did was that he returned $10,000 to Banker. 
The remaining 3,000 were spent on the cornermen, coaches, sparring partners and other people from his team. Sonny was left with nothing. On January 5, 1971, Sonny Liston's wife Geraldine returned home and immediately felt the smell of a decomposing body. She realized that Sonny was long dead. Geraldine found Sonny's body at 8.30 p.m. She called up the police and close relatives. I called my attorney and uh, told him that Sonny was dead. He said, how you know he's dead? I said, well, he's laying, I can see he's swolled up, you know? So he said, well, lock up and don't say anything. The police arrived in three hours and determined that Liston died about six days ago. Sonny Liston, the former heavyweight boxing champion, was found dead last night in his Las Vegas home by his wife. He was 38. He had been dead for at least a week. An autopsy failed to show the cause of death, and further studies will be made. Police said that they found small quantities of what appeared to be heroin and marijuana in the home. It was officially stated that the cause of death was an overdose of heroin. All his life, Liston was afraid of injections and he even canceled fights to Europe in order not to be vaccinated. Few of his surroundings believed that Liston could take drugs. Where was the surgical tubing that he would have probably used to wrap around his arm to expose a vein? Where was the spoon used for cooking? Had it been moved? None of this stuff was present. Scars on the arms of Sonny Liston, which at that time appears they were interpreted as uh, needle marks. People say, well, he couldn't have done drugs. He was afraid of needles. Nobody knows for sure when he was born, just as nobody knows when he died. He was a mystery to others, and even to himself, but he managed to leave a bright mark on boxing history as a person whose opponents were afraid of looking into his eyes.